welcome to my channel and uh, subscribe and uh, hit the like button if you wish and I appreciate it uh, it does help my channel quite a bit and uh, I'm gonna get right on this right now and um, the Supreme Court just handed Donald Trump a huge win that left Democrats stewing in rage now this was on November the 2nd of 22 uh, which was uh, last week and I don't know why I didn't get this posted but I didn't so most of you probably already know this but I'll carry on <laughs> Democrats took another loss at the Supreme Court this one was costly and the Supreme Court just handed Donald Trump a huge win that left Democrats stewing in rage Law lawmakers it's time we support a personal opinion I don't know why they put that in there, but they did. Supreme Court Justice, uh, Chief Justice John Roberts delivered a win for former President Donald Trump in his fight with Congressional Democrats over his tax returns. And I've still got a question. Why was it so important for the Democrats to look over his tax papers? You know, his tax returns. I think the lawyers and the judge could handle that without the Democrats having their nose stuck in it. I mean, oh my goodness, I don't know. I could be me. <laughs> Chief Justice Roberts issued an order blocking Democrats from obtaining Trump's tax returns until both parties could submit briefs by November 10th. Yeah, why do they want to see his tax returns? The judge and the lawyers, I presume, could very well handle that. Upon consideration of the application of counsel for the applicants, it is so ordered that the mandate of the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit, case number 21-5289, is hereby stayed pending further order of the undersigned or of the court, Robert's order read. One of the leftist's longest running witch hunts into Trump's surrounds, Democrats desired to obtain the former president's tax returns. Trump did not make his tax returns public during the 2016 campaign, something he was under no legal obligation to do. After he was advised, not to do so as he was under audit. Well, there's another thing. The audit, you know, they could handle it with the judge <laughs> and everybody else. But now the Democrats, who do they think they are? The Democrats brought into conspiracy theories that Trump's tax returns contain evidence of secret payments from Russian President Vladimir Putin, or proof of financial crimes, neither of which is true. The idea of Trump colluding with Russians was fancy cooked up by Hillary Clinton's campaign to excuse her defeat in 2016. And Manhattan Democrat District Attorney Alvin Bragg, Braggs, Bragg, B-R-A-G-G, -G, Braggs, closed down a criminal investigation into Trump for criminal tax fraud over the absence of any evidence. What is the Democrats' problems? But Democrats want to continue this fishing expedition in the hopes of digging up nuggets they can spin as embarrassing for Trump ahead of his expected 2024 re-election campaign. House Waves and Means Chair Representative Richard Neal, Democrat of MA. Now, would that be Massachusetts? Fumed about Justice Roberts' decision. We've waited long enough. We must begin our oversight of the IRS's mandatory presidential audit program as soon as possible, Neal's statement read. The next hearing on Trump's tax returns will come two days after the midterm election. 
voters are widely expected to oust Democrats' majority and hand power to the Republicans. I hope so. Will the Supreme Court allow a lame duck Democrat majority in the House to play political funny business with a former president's tax returns when they are out of power in six weeks. I mean, oh my goodness. It's not funny, but, and if they do find something, Trump will go by whatever the judge or court or whatever tells him to do to make up for the mistakes he's made. And the Democrats, Democrats can't even sit back and accept that part of it. They got to keep digging and digging and digging and digging. Oh, uh, you know, it does get sickening. It really does. Let's try this one. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> Elon Musk clowns AOC in her ridiculous attack on his Twitter policy. In response to Alexandria, Ocasio-Cortez accusation that he had tampered with her Twitter account. Elon Musk took a jab at the New York representative. AOC, a Democrat from New York, accused Musk of intentionally stopping her Twitter account from working properly after she criticized his plan to charge $8 a month for account verification. Must joke that the allegation was abuse of power. According to AOC, she noticed a glitch after she had attended a community event in the Bronx earlier this week. After returning home, she received a message from her team asking if she needed help. She then opened her Twitter app and noticed that it had disappeared. She just saw a blank screen and she thought it was weird. Oh well, yeah, I would too. She then claimed that she had gotten under the skin of Musk, who she referred to as the little billionaire. The little billionaire. <laughs> it's funny. On Twitter, AOC, that her notifications and mentions had stopped working after she had exchanged barbs with Musk. While she was having a look at the situation, she noted that people should pay $8 for an app to get blocked after they make a statement that they don't like. She then posted a photo of her app's blank notification page. In response to a memory, a memory or a memo, a week memo. In response to a mem, is that pronounced memo? I thought it was M-E-M-O for memo, but this is M-E-M-E -M -E that showed an upsetting looking Alexandria Cortez next to uh, Tesla, Musk responded with a laughing emoji. She said earlier this year that she had owned a, a Tesla and wanted to get rid of it. Musk and the representative had then gotten into a Twitter feud. After announcing that he would be charging $8 a month for account verification, the new Twitter CEO said that the service would be offering a variety of perks. Some of these include the ability to post long-form videos and fewer ads. I'd like to get rid of the ads. I really would. Musk responded to AOC saying that her feedback was appreciated, and she said she should now pay $8. Just a minute, Paisley. Twitter started a wave of layoffs on Friday. It is expected to lay off around half of its workforce. Oh, no. Oh, that don't sound good. Oh, my. Oh, just right when the holidays are coming. Maybe they'll be laid off with some pay or something, you know. You wonder. I don't know. Well, let's go for one more. i got a few minutes here. And I'm not sure, but this might be the last uh, uh, set I do tonight. I'm just trying to catch up because I took the weekend off, yes, and um, I had to do some other things, so I had to get busy. <laughs> Alarming bells are ringing. We are not producing enough weapons. 
hopefully and prayfully we won't need them but don't know the alarming bells are ringing American defense companies are not currently capable of producing weapons and equipment at the speed and volume we would need in the event of a major war or more realistically in the event of two smaller wars well half of our equipment got left over in that other country and they got it now so is it's understandable Biden just kept sending everything over there money and and artillery and guns and whatever and now we're low yeah he got us right in a good spot didn't he Biden president's rhetoric is right this will likely be the decade of decision with the ex existential challenges looming abroad his actions however fail to back up those words we must be prepared to handle whatever crisis emerge with strength and options. The fact is, we are not. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. I have caught a cold. Yes, I have a little bit. It has been 252 days since Russia invaded Ukraine. Well, it's probably been longer than that now. Uh, and the U.S. military is already dipping into wartime stockpiles. Why? Because 70% of the more than 15 billion of equipment we have sent to Ukraine came directly from the US military stocks. Thank you Biden. That was for the sake of speed. The Ukrainians currently use more ammunition in two weeks than we can produce in one year. Just one of the 22 armed shipments to Ukraine thus far included more javelins than we can produce in a year. It would already take us at least two to three years to replenish our stocks if the war in Ukraine ended today, which it will not, and that assumes we accelerate production rates. At recent production rates, it could take a decade. That's ten years. Oh my God. At current aid levels, every six months, the war continues, will dig us roughly two more years into the hole. These are more horrifying stats where these come from, including a series of recent reports and studies conducted by Mark Kanshian at CSIS and others. Houston, they are signaling frantically, we have a problem. Remember that movie? Houston, we got a problem. Who was that, Tom Hanks? Was that Tom Hanks? I think it was. And it is a serious one. Yes, it is. We do not currently have the manufacturing capabilities to produce enough equipment to support Ukraine at current levels while maintaining U.S. military readiness, much less tackle another crisis that we fear could soon emerge in Taiwan. M most importantly, you can be sure that if our military were directly engaged in a war against a major adversary, adversary we would be burning through much more equipment than the Ukrainian Ukrainian military is today recent war games have proved as much that lesson is here the answer is not to slow or cease our support of the Ukrainian army ensuring the Ukrainians can hold the line against Russian aggression is critical the liberal rule based world order which has brought historic levels of peace since World War II depends on it. Note well, though that our supply of 155 mm ammunition, HIMARS, short of highly mobile rocket systems, Stingers, shoulder-mounted aircraft and missiles, 155 mm holsters, long-range cannons, and the Javelin's single-man portable anti-tank weapons are in short supply. Well, sure, they're all over yonder. Shortages are accelerated, exacerbated by the majority of repair parts being redirected to Ukraine. 
making it difficult for our own forces to maintain the equipment they still have. Recent and planned military exercises are being curtailed as a result. In this if this continues, there will be a real consequences. Turnover in the military is extremely high. The population is young. In the Marine Corps, nearly 75% of the entire force turns over every four years. Regular training is essential, otherwise a sizable percentage of the force will have never adequately, adequately practiced the task that they must perform in the event of a war. Now, it is not the time to let readiness slip. In recent days, Secretary Blinken has warned a pre repeatedly that the Chinese have accelerated their timeline to take Taiwan by force. If they do, we may be called upon to defend the island. A failure to do so would stun our partners in Asia, Japan, South Korea, and the Philippines. They would then doubt that America will defend them against Chinese aggression and could be driven to curry favor with China for their survival. If they do, Chinese uh, hegemony, hegemony, H-E-G-E, money, hegemony in Asia would be nearly a foregone conclusion and its leverage over us sharply expanded. The logical move, therefore, is for us to ramp up our defense production capabilities, capability immediately and rapidly, yet the Pentagon is not doing it. So far, only 2.6 billion of equipment is currently under contract to replace the more than 12 billion of equipment drawn down from our stocks. Even less has been done to solve the bigger problem. We need enough equipment to continue to arm Ukraine while replacing the equipment sent while upsizing military stocks and production capability to prepare for a larger crisis that may come in the decade of a decision. The Pentagon has long been aware of these problems, but the erosion of the defense industrial base has been relitigated to often and for too long to lower level bureaucrats. The problem is no longer lingers over the horizon. The time has come to mobilize our defense industrial base before we lose the capability altogether. The war in Ukraine has offered us awareness and time. Never look a gift horse in the mouth. Amen to that. We're not in good shape, folks. You know, everybody, everybody's got to know that by now. It's just horrible to think think about what has happened to us over these two years. It's not that we didn't want to help the Ukrainians. But for heaven's sakes, talk about, what do you say, um, overdid it? I would say we really overdid it. And here we sit now. Oh, I don't know. I don't know, folks. Well, I think, um, I'm not sure I'll be back later. I might. It depends. Um, just stay safe, stay healthy, and until we meet again, I like that saying. Remember old Dale Evans and, and um, oh my goodness, Trigger, Roy Rogers, yeah, till we meet again. Well, listen, you are a blessing, and give a blessing to someone else. It feels good in here, like Bob Ross says over his paintings, you know, Paint a painting. It makes you feel good in here. Give a blessing. It makes you feel good in here. And until we meet again, I'll just say good night for now. Got to find my camera button, folks. God bless you. Good night.